Hey everybody, how you doing? Chad, welcome to the channel, CK Knife and Tool. Hopefully, you guys are subscribed. If not, why not? Just kidding. Hit that button down below. Come on guys, help me out. Show a little love and support. Today's video is just a little bit about gluing up scales. And it's probably maybe a boring video for some folks, but I've actually had some emails sent to me, uh, contacting me through my website at cknifeandtool.com. I've had folks asking me questions about the process of knife making or what I thought about one versus the other thing or what I do about this and what I do about that and how about, you know, so and so. So I got to thinking, you know, I, I would have never thought that, you know, I would have been asked these questions. I would have just figured somebody would have just hit YouTube and, and just, you know, found something like that. But because I was taught a little bit more formally how to make knives, and there's guys out there that are trying to learn on their own or come to this type of platform like YouTube to learn. I got to think, well, maybe I should do a video like this every now and then, just kind of showing you a little bit about what I'm doing. Not necessarily a tutorial, but just to give you an option. There's probably two or three different types of ideas or options out there, but I thought, you know, maybe I would share a little bit what I'm doing. Not like a build from start to finish, but maybe, hey, I'm doing this knife, so this is what I'm doing for this. And, hey, I'm doing this knife here, and this is what I'm doing for that. So hopefully this part is going to help some of you out. So, gluing up scales. This is a Jasper I'm working on, and this is for Hannah. Um, Hannah uh, ordered actually two knives. She's got a Montana, wait for it. Yes, a Hannah Montana. Uh, she's got a Montana that I just finished up a little while ago, and now I'm getting ready to glue up the scales for her Jasper, the matching set. So I thought I would bring you along and show you a little bit what I'm doing. She picked out uh, two different types of materials and so she wanted a turquoise type material as a bolster. She just wanted, she didn't actually know what a bolster was and she didn't really have much of a preference from one versus the other. But she was just kind of trying to figure out what she can make this to, to be a really cool gift. So I came up with the, the, the turquoise idea because she said she had somebody that liked that and I guess these are gifts so I'm making them for her, but she's going to be giving them away. Um, so what I'm doing here is, as I pick away the scale, what I did is I actually uh, glued together turquoise um, bolsters. And this is Coco Bolo. It's a grade C Coco Bolo. It's not like some of the A's and B's you guys are, are familiar with me doing. But this is a grade C Coco Bolo and turquoise bolsters. And what I did is I actually glued them on a black fiber liner. And I'm going to do a little video about that later on, about just gluing up the scales and with bolsters and such and wood, uh, dissimilar materials and looks as well as a liner. And I'm actually going to make a jig. And I'm going to show you guys how I do that, uh, bring you along to make a jig and show you how you could probably glue up your scales pretty, pretty efficiently. So what I did here is, so here's the other set. So after I got them glued up and got them uh, prepped, um, Shoulders are sanded down to 400 grit, and then I polished them on the wheel. And then what I went and did is I mark out the scales. I take the knife and I put the pins in there like this. I'll set the pins in each of these holes, and then I'll put the knife on here. And then I'll mark all these little holes that are in here. And what those holes are for, not just to lighten the tang. In this case, uh, the Jasper really doesn't need that. Uh, if you guys have been following my videos a little bit about what these Jaspers come in at and weigh, I don't have to worry about that too much. But what it also helps for is the epoxy can come in through each one of these little holes right here and bonds to the other set of scales like here. Well, what I do is I dimple them so this way the epoxy can, can grab a hold of the, the scale. You know, it's, it gives it a little bit better bonding instead of just a smooth part. There are these little dimples in here. Let the epoxy go inside there and grab on. And then they go through these little holes. Um, these holes and these holes don't all have to line up perfectly. It's just to give a little bit more grip versus just two flat surfaces. Now, as epoxies, I learned on an epoxy called T88. Uh, T88 is not a bad epoxy at all. Um, I used it for the better part of a year and a half. Uh, my knife mentor, I... My, <laughs> I keep saying my knife mentor, and he keeps telling me he's, you know, he's not my mentor anymore. He's my peer. He's my friend, which he's a good friend. Um, when I was taught, I was taught on T88. Uh, he still uses T88 to this day. 
I started looking into different types of epoxies just to try something different. Um, I went to West Systems two-part epoxy and I did a review on it um, a year ago and uh, if I find it I'll put a description or a little tab up here it'll pop down as I'm talking uh, or a description down below in the, the description box. It's a West Systems epoxy but it was a it's a really good epoxy but it's very uh, liquidy and they do make a um, a thickener so you have an A and a B and uh, they do have like a part C that you would add to it but the, the, the epoxy was expensive to begin with but then to add that and then have to mix three parts excuse me and do all that stuff got a little bit be a little bit you know too much um, it does work well I've used it for some other other projects and I'll continue to use it but it's not going to be my knife epoxy um, it will work good for doing uh, liners because it's a little waterier so it's good to use for the fiber liners and doing uh, bolsters and stuff like this to similar metal uh, materials to epoxy them together like that it works good that way uh, another video though but what I changed to doing is using G-Flex and G-Flex is a West Systems product here and it's a two-part mix like all your other epoxies but this is this was probably a couple of dollars less than the T88 was at the time I bought this. This stuff lasts a while, but I think I saved maybe five bucks by going West Systems G Flex versus the um, T88. Now I'll put descriptions or I'll put links to the T88 as well as the G Flex down below, and I'll let you guys look it up because when I put a description or a link down below, whatever that link is at the time I put it, that price might change when you click on that link it refreshes itself automatically or it might be out of stock so I'll leave the descriptions of these epoxies that I'm talking about down below in the description box but I'm really pleased with the West Systems G Flex if you can't get it by all means if you think you're gonna get into knife making or you want a really good epoxy then go to T88 you're not gonna go wrong either way like I said I just I think I saved maybe five bucks by going to G Flex at the time of purchasing versus T88 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these two up and uh, get to, you know, mix it all up, glue these scales up, and show you what I do in that process. Okay, now what some people have done in the past is, um, like with the other West system I have, I have these little mixing cups right here, and you can get these through Amazon link or so, I'll leave them for you. But they're a little plastic measuring cup, and they have the milliliters on here and cc's, and it works really good if you're going to do, um, if I was doing a couple of Jaspers, I would mix a cup of this up because it's a lot of epoxy and I, you know, don't waste the cups or anything like that, but it's really not that required. Um, I just use painter's tape. I'll stretch three sheets of painter, or strips of painter's tape here on the counter, just like this. I'll st strip those out, and then what I do is I just draw a pencil line, just like that. I just draw a pencil line like that, and what that does is it, it actually gives me the distance of line of how much epoxy to use. Now, you might think, well, that's not very scientific, Chad. That, that can't work. Well, honestly, it's been working for my knife mentor for the better part of 40 years, or my old buddy Jeff for the better part of 40 years, and it's been working for me for the last three years. So, But what you do is just do three even passes. In, in my case, I'm going to do three even passes of the Part A and the Part B. And the pencil line just keeps me from not going too far because, as you see, the epoxy starts to uh, spread out a little bit. So one, two, and three, and that's it. It's like I said. It's if you if you just put a little bit more of one than the other, it's not going to hurt the knife at all. It isn't. Um, you're you're talking, you know, a tenth of a cc or something like that. It's not a big deal. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this epoxy up like this and give it a minute or so. In doing so, I'm going to tell you guys, I already cleaned the scales and the pins and the, the, the tangs of the knife and the knife itself. I've already cleaned it, and I use this acetone that's over here. I just use white paper towel and acetone, and you want to clean them up really good. I'll even use the compressor, and I'll blow the holes of the, the tang um, just to make sure there's no debris caught up inside there. But you want to make sure that your knife is uh, cleaned really well. And acetone is the best way to do that with it. Okay, one of the next things I'm going to do is, other than having gloves, I have my, my uh, three inch clamps or two and a half inch clamps. Uh, these are Irwin's. They work really good. I'll leave a link down below as well. 
because they're a really nice clamp. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit of tape and I'll just fold it over to the, the blade of the knife and I just want to cover it up. I'll be removing the tape later once I'm done gluing everything up, but it's just to kind of protect the, the, the finish of the knife itself. Um, I do remove the tape after gluing everything up and I go to clean because I don't want to, I want to make sure that I don't have any epoxy or anything that got along the edge of the tape that I don't see. And then when I take the tape off, there's going to be a, an epoxy line across your Rakasa. So what I do is I just make sure I put tape on here to make sure I protect the flat of the blade. And then when I'm ready to clean everything up and I'm finished, I'll take it all off. But you guys will see that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in the clamp over here. Okay, so I got my bench clamp right here. Um, I've got a piece of leather and I use paper towel for the most part, but that's not required. That was because I was just got done working on another knife and doing a video on it. Uh, so what I do here is I just clamp my knife in there really nice and firm. Again, it's all been cleaned up and it's ready to rock and roll. Next, I'm gonna put my, my latex gloves on because I have in the past worked on these without, without gloves and you know it, it's been fine. I've got epoxy on my hands, but gets to be a mess. So what I'm gonna do first is I am going to bring you guys over here set you up because what I'm going to do first is I am going to put epoxy on the tang here. So now the epoxy has been mixed well. It's had a moment to set. So you just spread it and it doesn't have to be a lot because again you're going to squeeze these scales together and all whatever's excess is going to squeeze out of there but you just want to make sure you fill all those little divots with epoxy just like this and you get it spread out. I do that. Then I take my pin, I just rub epoxy. Now granted, the other thing I probably didn't mention in this is um, what I do is I take the pins, and maybe I can show you this. I take the pins and I run, I twist them like this, holding sandpaper, and I'll twist it because it creates an abrasion around the entire pin. So it gives the epoxy something to hold on to. So I did that uh, already. Like I said, this was kind of an impromptu video. I just I was thinking about it while I was working on the other knife and then it got me doing this. So that scale's got epoxy on it, pins have epoxy on it. I'm going to go ahead and put epoxy along the inside of this scale just like this. Then I'm going to take some epoxy and smear it on the pins on this side here. Okay now I'm going to bring you over here. Okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, the rest of this epoxy and I'm going to start buttering it up on the sides of the tang and now you see why this bench is a, quite a useful tool. The bench clamp here is quite a useful tool for making a knife. Um, C clamps definitely a necessity. You don't need the bench clamp, but it's definitely quite helpful to say the least. Um, it's like that third hand. You know, it, it, it's you can never have enough clamps. You can never have a good bench vise, or you could always have a good bench vise. Anyhow. I'm babbling there. All right, so now I'm going to take my scales, my two halves, just like this, and I'm going to run the first half through here with the pins, and then the second half is going to go here. Go just like this. I'm going to press it together like that, and I'm going to get my little my putty knife here, my little putty, because there's going to be epoxy that's going to ooze out of the bottom, and I want to pick that up. I'm going to spread that off to the side, and then I'm just going to press this by hand, and I'm going to make sure the pins are strong on one side. Because I always make my pins a little bit longer than I need. Well, I usually do. I try to, so I do that. And then I'm just going to clean out whatever epoxy I don't need in here. Because if I clean it out now, it's less I have to sand through later when uh, everything's set up. Okay, so that is... That's kind of squeezed up right there. I'm going to clean this off real quick because I save these. It's actually, I just clean these off with, a, with a acetone and then I reuse them again. So What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my clamp on and I'm going to use three clamps. And you'll see why I use three clamps because I actually take the knife out of this to clean it all up better. But I want to use three clamps to help balance it. So the first clamp goes right up here at the shoulders. And the second clamp's going to come down here, all the way at the bottom of the knife. Let 
Now, you don't have to worry about the epoxy that's on the tang right now. That's not a concern. Um, you know, if you get on the outside of the scales, that's not an issue. Your, your clamp will break free from that. That's not going to be an issue. It'll come loose. So you can clean the scales as best as possible if you want, but before putting them on, but it's really not an issue. So clean off the rest of that. Now I'm going to take this third clamp, and I'm going to put it on the opposite side like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually creating a base to be able to stand the knife upwards. So now I have a clamp at the back, the front, and right here in the middle. And you want to make sure you have even pressure, but you don't want it so tight that you're going to end up getting rid of all of your epoxy. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to take this out of the clamp. We're going to bring it back over here on the bench, and I'll show you what I'm doing to clean it up. So in doing this, I'm just going to take some clean paper towel again and just keep cleaning away now that it's standing up. And I got my tape off. I went to go move the camera, and the camera wasn't running, so I don't think I recorded this part. But as you see, I took the tape off of the blade. And what I'm doing is I'm cleaning off the shoulders of my scales and the ricasa. Uh, the reason why I did the tape is because I didn't want anything getting on the flat, and I didn't want to scratch anything up. But the reason why I take the tape off is I don't want to have epoxy at the edge of that tape. And then when I go to take this off later then I've got a line across there, so I don't want that to happen. So right now, we're all good to go. We're cleaned up. You might have little marks or something like that, but you see, just clean it off with a little acetone, and you're good to go. So that's just a, a little insight. I mean, it's probably a boring video for most of you, but because I'm starting to, I, I'm starting to get some emails, inquiries about certain things, you know, I just thought, what the heck, maybe I'll do this every now and then. I'll glue up a knife, or I'll shape a knife, or I'll do something, and I'll tell you why it is I'm doing it this way. It's, I'm not going to be saying that, hey, this is the end-all be-all, or this is the number one product to use, nothing like that. There is nothing that I use at this particular moment in making the video. I'm not sponsored by anybody, so I don't have a horse in a race if you use West Systems or, or, or T88, or um, if you use uh, one epoxy over the other, or if you use one type of wood over another, or anything, or steel. Um, it's just what I use, it's what I've become familiar with, it's what I like. So that's why I just want to share it with you all, because if you're learning, then maybe I'm a resource that you can use to help get a different aspect of what it is you're trying to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let this set up. It's clean up. It's cleaned up right now. I'm going to come back to this in about a half hour, 20 minutes to a half hour. Make sure I don't have any residual epoxy peeking out of the shoulders, because it does happen from time to time. That's the other reason why I keep my knife this way, is because if it sits this way, if anything is moving, epoxy and such, it's going to fall downwards. If you do it like this, epoxy is going to slowly fall this way, if there is any movement at all, which there usually isn't. But I'm going to do this, and just in case there is a little bit of epoxy that oozes out between the shoulders of the blade, the shoulders of the scales, and the ricasa, I'm going to be back down here in 20 minutes. I'm going to clean it up again, make sure it's all good to go. And then it'll set up. Uh, the G-Flex that uh, my experience has been, they're pretty spot on. You get about an hour, hour and 20 minutes of work time. And where it'll, it'll uh, uh, before it starts to kind of set up, uh, I think it's like six hours. And then you can technically shape the scales, but I don't. I won't shape the scales of these knives, for, for the, of this knife for 24 hours. I let it sit, I let it cure. That's the best thing to do. Don't rush into it. If you don't have to, don't rush into it. Um, better always err on the side of caution for the most part. But anyhow, guys, hopefully the video was helpful. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Um, you'll see a video on this later on down the line because, like I said, the Montana's already completed. The Jasper's just about done. And then I'm going to be doing a reveal video for everybody. So, again, thank you very much. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Keep me from the bottom of the YouTube bucket. Again, if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button. Check me out on Facebook at CK Knife and Tool, as well as Instagram, patreon.com forward slash CK Knife and Tool. And of course, here on YouTube. You guys have a good one. Bye.